Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In, Volume 2, Part 28. On my crackheads update, uh, I saw a young Hispanic guy walking down Corinth. He had a backpack on. He was talking on the phone. Uh, I can tell he'd been to prison. Been in a Texas prison. I can see the Tongo Blast uh, tattoos on him. And I was listening at his phone conversation. Somebody had threw his ass out of the house. He was telling me, hey, I'm walking out here in this hot sun. Come down here and pick me up so I can get out of your life. Whoever it was, they wasn't no, they wasn't coming to pick him up. A car came by and blowed at his ass and kept right on going. Uh, I don't know if he's a crackhead, but uh, he in a bad situation. And uh, y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out and let's ride. On some of my videos recently. Cause I got a new camera, you see it uh, the, look like the light is flickering. That is not the light. The lights in here are brand new. What it is, is the shutter speed of the camera. It's supposed to be set at 60 feet per second. Okay, I set the speed, but it's still flicking because of, of fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lights flick. Your natural eye just don't pick it up, but the shutter speed of the camera can pick it up. Now, when I get to my new residence, I'm going to get LED lighting, and you won't see the flickering. In the meanwhile, you got to sit back and just ride through it with me. Now, I took my boy Lion Willie uh, over to East Dallas with me. That's where I'm going to be moving to. And I was in there talking to the apartment manager. And when I came back out, Lion Willie had a, three white ladies around him talking to him. He was lying. He was telling them that he used to play with the Dallas Cowboys. And they was feeding into the bullshit. And one of them called her husband over and she said, you know, this guy used to play with the Cowboys. That guy looked at me and said, I can name all the cowboys. He said, I don't remember you. He said, uh, you don't know me? My name is Willie Baxter. You don't know me? Man, I'm the one who caught the pass on Christmas Day and was running down the field and dropped the football. Man looked at him and said, no, I don't believe I know you. He said, you kind of small to be done playing with the Dallas Cowboys. He said, hell, when they had Coach Tom Larry, they didn't feed us. I was so damn hungry, that's why I dropped the ball. I was weak. They didn't even want to pay us money. The man looked at him, he said, uh, Sir, I don't want to call you a lying fucker. He said, but I got I got my doubts about you. I ain't never seen you before, and I know all the cowboys. I had to hurry up and rescue Willie before his, 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 uh, his game plan blow up. Anyway, this next segment is dealing with... Uh, Iconic Texas Killers. The first one is Joe Ball. Ball called himself the Alligator Man because he re reportedly liked to throw live cats and dogs to the gators that lived in the pond he built behind the bar he owned in suburban San Antonio. But that wasn't the bootlegger turned bar owner's most violent hobby. He killed two women who worked at the bar and buried them at the beach. Police believe he, sh but he shot himself to death when confronted by authorities. One of his employees, some of his employees, ex-girlfriends and wife went missing before he died and never turned up again. The guy who led authorities to the bodies of the two women saying he had been Ball's accomplice swore there were 20 of them but the Gators had eaten the bodies. I'll be damned. Next one is uh, the train hopping 
Arturo Resendez, also known as the Railroad Killer, confessed to 15 murders in Texas, Florida, Illinois, Georgia, and Kentucky. He is suspected of another in California. Sometimes he would rape his victims. Most of the time he would take their money and jewelry and send it to his wife in Mexico. Now that is the definition of working from abroad. Some of the dead were attacked in their homes. Leafy Mason, 87, was beaten to death with her antique iron in her home in Hughes Spring, Texas. On July the 4th, 1999, Naomi Dominguez, 26, was raped and killed with a pickaxe in her Houston home. Hours later, on that day, the same pickaxe was used to kill Josephine Conaveca, 73, in Schulenburg, Texas, where Resendez had driven Domingo's car. He left the pickaxe in Kozinka's head. Most of the murders occurred near the railroad tracks where he would jump on and off passing train. Some of the authorities believe he is responsible for at least some of the murders of the young women in Juarez, Mexico, where bodies turned up by the dozens in the 1990s. Several near the, the tracks. Texas executed him in 2006. Uh, as a twist of fate, he knew the authorities was closing in on him. So he, he returned to Mexico and he had his wife to turn him in to get the reward. So she'll have some money to support his, his kids with. You know, he, he knew that uh, American authorities was on his trail just a matter of time before he was going to be arrested. Now, I knew the railroad killed at the Polanski unit where I worked at on death row. And uh, a lot of the time, a female guard would take him his food to feed him. And, and he would say, uh, he would tell her, I'm killing you. I kill you. So he was scared of females. They would go get a male. And what they would do, they walk up to his the tray slot at his cell and drop his tray. So yeah, inmate refused to eat. He threw his tray out. They wouldn't feed him. After about the third day, one day uh, uh the captain was over there. His name is uh Wickersham. And uh he told Wickersham, he said, uh, Captain uh, uh me no speak English, and they don't feed me. He said, well, you keep telling the female guards you're going to kill them. He said, me don't speak English. Me don't kill nobody. Boy, he was hungry in hell. He hadn't eaten five or six days. And that was pissing the other guys off on death row. So they all started banging and shit. Finally, the warden came down, and uh, they started back feeding him because they can't do death row prison no any kind of way because they got access to the media. Media always there interviewing those guys. On Wednesday is media day on death row. Uh, all type of news people be there talking to these guys, especially the ones that's on death watch is close to being executed. Uh, I met this guy once at uh, also at the Polanski unit, and he used to work at a funeral home. Man, he had some of the weirdest stories to tell. He said when they would bring a pretty woman in while performing the autopsy, he would inject her with a lot of hot water to warm the, the, so the body won't be stiff. And he'd have sex with the women. He said he should put them in the funeral home Cadillac and ride around with them through the hood. Sit her up in the front seat. He said all the guys thought he'd had him a badass old lady. They didn't know this was a dead body. He said every pretty woman who came through that funeral home, he had sex with. He said, man, I used to be telling him, yeah, I got you now. I got you now. When you was alive, you wouldn't have did this, but I got you now. And he asked me, he said, man, you know they didn't say nothing? I just looked at him. What the hell is a dead body going to say? It take all kind to make a prison inmate. 
Texas Prism got them all. You, you name it, they got it. Also, tomorrow, uh, Lockdown 23 and 1 will be dropping the, uh, the, the interview me and him did Friday. And uh, y'all tune in and like and subscribe. I don't know exactly what time it's going to be. I mean, he'll send out a notification. And I got to go get this video uploaded again over at my subscriber's place of business. Uh, y'all like and subscribe, and I thank you for watching. Y'all have a good day.